Hi, my name is Kirk Fleming. I'm an EMT and paramedic student, and I also have over 30 years of experience working as an insurance company mathematician. Uh, in these videos, what I'd like to do is work through some of the MedMath calculations that paramedics are required to do. I, I think people might benefit from actually seeing the calculations done step by step on the screen. Uh, I'm going to point you to a website called Paramedic Pearls and Pitfalls that's created by Chris Johnson, who's a paramedic down in Florida, and he uh, is also a paramedic instructor. He, on his website, he has 20 problems that he gives his paramedic students to work through. I'm going to uh, actually take those problems and work through them here on the screen. There's going to be three videos. Uh, the first I'm going to talk about uh, solutions or problems where you have to draw up a certain amount of medication as in a syringe. The second video will add the complication of weight-based medications. And finally, the third video is going to talk about drip rates. Now, Chris talks about the master formula, and the benefit of the master formula is this is the only formula that you have to memorize in order to do all these calculations. Uh, the formula is desired dose times the weight of the patient in kilograms times the drip set that you're using divided by the concentration of the medication you're drawing up times the time you're administering it. And you use as much of this formula as you need for your particular problem and then you can just ignore the rest of it. So think of this formula as DD times W times DS divided by C times T, which you can memorize as Dunkin' Donuts was dropping sugar over their coffee and tea. So let's start with the first problem. <clears throat> you have a patient who's presenting with an exacerbation of congestive heart failure. After the administration of nitroglycerin, you decide to give the patient furosemide at a dose that is twice that of his daily dose. The patient normally takes 40 milligrams of furosemide daily. How many milligrams will you give to your patient, and how many milliliters will you draw up from the vial? And I'll just point out that uh, furosemide comes in vials that has 100 milligrams and 10 milliliters. So let's go over what we just discussed. Uh, the patient normally takes 40 milligrams of furosemide, and we want to give twice that amount for this administration, so that's 80 milligrams. Okay, this is the desired dose. And the concentration for the uh, medication of furosemide comes in a vial that has 100 milligrams in 10 <coughs> milliliters. This is the um, concentration. And we'll just put that in the formula, DD divided by C. So the 80 milligrams divided by 100 milligrams over 10 milliliters. Okay, we ignore the rest of the formula. I would recommend when you do these calculations, you reduce the uh, concentration down to a standard concentration level where you're doing the concentration of the drug over milliliters. In this case, I divided both of these sides by 10, so it's 10 milligrams in one milliliter. And finally, for the last step, we just divide 10 into 80. That's 8. And the milligrams cross off here. And when you do the double division for the milliliters, you end up with milliliters. That's your final answer. Let's do the next problem. <clears throat> All right, you're treating a patient who has a possible broken hip and you wish to provide that patient with some pain relief. You decide the best course of action would be to deliver, deliver 75 micrograms of fentanyl. How many milliliters will you deliver? All right, fentanyl comes in Carpujet. Uh, it's a, a sort of a prepackaged syringe that has 100 milligrams, micrograms in 2 milliliters. So let's write this out. The medication, the desired dose, is the 75 micrograms. 
and the concentration of the medication is 100 micrograms in 2 mLs. So going back to the formula, the DD divided by C, we have 75 micrograms divided by the 100 micrograms in 2 mLs equals 75. Here I'm going to divide the 2 into both sides, so I have 50 micrograms divided by 1 mL. And to do the calculation, the due to division, I'll write that down here, 50 into 75. It goes once. Okay, let's give myself some more room. And here I have 250. 50 into the 250 is 1.5. So the final answer, 1.5 mLs. Again, the micrograms cross off here, and the mLs come up to the top when you do the division. 1.5 mLs. <coughs> Next problem. Okay, this patient that we're dealing with, this patient is not tolerating the situation very well, and you decide that she would be better served to forget the entire ordeal. You decide that two milligrams of her said would be in order. How many milliliters will you draw up and deliver to your patient? Well, the desired dose is two milligrams of her said. And for said comes in containers or vials that have five milligrams in five milliliters. So DD divided by C, two milligrams over five milligrams, five mLs equals two milligrams over one milligram per mL. And this one works out pretty easy. Uh, we have two milliliters is the answer. <clears throat> Next problem. All right, this patient that we're dealing with, uh, they start to break out in hives, and you wish to administer some diphenhydramine at the dose of 25 milligrams. How many milliliters will you deliver? The desired dose <coughs> is 25 milligrams. And the concentration, diphenhydramine, comes in bottles or vials that have 50 milligrams in one milliliter. So doing the DD divided by C, 25 milligrams over 50 milligrams equals. Um, in this case, uh, we're already in the uh, uh, the most uh, reduced formula. We're, we're in the standard concentration. We have to do the division 50 into 25. Let me do that up here. 50 divided into 25. All right. Well, 50 goes into 25 zero times. And let's bring down. And 50 goes into 250 five times. So our final answer is 0 0.5 milliliters. Next problem. I think we're still dealing with the same patient on this one, the next one. Oh, here we go. Yep. The same patient is really having problems that you believe are associated with the administration of Reset. So you decide to reverse its effect by administering some Romazicon. Uh, Romazicon, uh, the dose that you want to give is 0 0.2 milligrams. How many milliliters will you deliver? Well, Romazicon comes in vials that are 1 milligram in 10 mLs. Let's see. 
So our desired dose, we said, is 0 0.2 milligrams. And the concentration is 1 milligram in 10 mLs. <clears throat> Going to the master formula, we have uh, 0 0.2 milligrams divided by 1 milligram in 10 mLs. All right, that's going to be 0 0.2 milligrams. And if I divide 10 by both sides, I get 0 0.1 milligrams divided by the ml. And in this case, I wanted to divide the 0 0.1 into the 0 0.2. Well, uh, some people may see right away that's 2 milliliters would be the answer. Let me do the... Uh, division over here just in case that's a spot where people are getting confused. Uh, 0 0.1 okay into 0 0.2 and when you do that uh, you move the decimal point over one whenever you have this decimal point out here in the first number and you move it over here so the decimal point now goes here and we're dividing one into two that's two so the answer is two milliliters. Next problem. Okay, our problems still abound with this poor patient. Uh, and we're thinking now that maybe it's the fentanyl that's causing all the problems. And you decide to administer 0 0.4 milligrams of naloxone. How many milliliters will you deliver? All right, the, the desired dose is the 0 0.4 milligrams of naloxone and the concentration um, naloxone comes in vials that have 4 milligrams and 10 mls. So going back to the desired dose divided by concentration we have 0 0.4 milligrams divided by 4 milligrams 10 mls uh, I'm going to divide 10 into both of these numbers over here so that we have the 0 0.4 milligrams divided by 0 0.4 milligrams in 1 ml, which is equal to 1 ml. You're dividing 0 0.4 into 0 0.4. <clears throat> Two more problems for this class for this type of problem. Uh, let's see, you are treating a patient who has a severe exposure to organophosphates and your protocol dictates that seven milligrams of atropine del be delivered to your patient. How many milliliters are necessary? So the desired dose is seven milligrams of atropine. And uh, atropine comes in containers I'll just say I'm looking at pictures of the drugs here, so that's how I know this. Uh, the atropine comes in concentrations of 8 milligrams of 20 and 20 mLs. And we go to the formula. Uh, desired dose over 8 milligrams, 20 mLs. Just in looking at this, uh, you, you want to give seven. Uh, you're, you want to give almost. Uh, the vial has eight milligrams, and you want to give seven of it. So you're giving almost the entire vial. So our final answer, when we come up with it, we want to see we're giving something almost very close to the 20 mLs. But let's continue. Uh, seven milligrams. Okay, in this case, we want to divide 20 into eight. I'll do that over here. Okay, 20 doesn't go into 8, that's 0, uh, but 20 does go into 80, uh, it goes 4 times. So we have 0 0.4 milligrams per milliliters. Okay, now in the next part of the calculation we want to divide 0 0.4 into 7. Let me write that down here, I'll give myself some more room. Okay, the 0 0.4 
divided into the 7. All right, again, when we move this over, we move the decimal point over 1, uh, move it over the same way. 4 goes into 7 once, so put down 4, that creates 30. 4 goes into 30 7 times. And 4 goes into 25. And that is actually our answer right there. Uh, the answer is 17.5 mLs. And remember we were discussing we want to give almost the entire vial and you see 17.5 is pretty much all of the 20. <clears throat> and our last problem in this class, in this uh, type of question. All right, you have a patient who needs 20 milligrams of Ketorolac, which I um, read is a pain killer, and how many milliliters will you draw up? All right, so the Ketorolac comes in 50 milligrams and 2 mLs. Let's write out everything we have. Desired dose is 20 milligrams. And the concentration is 50 milligrams in 2 mLs. Let's write out the formula. 20 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 2 mLs. Um, doing uh, the division here by 2 on the bottom, 20 milligrams over 25 milligrams, 1 mL. Uh, I want to divide the 25 into 20 at this point. 20, okay. Well, 25 doesn't go into 20. I'll put an extra zero here on the decimal point, but 25 does go into 208 times. And that is the answer, 0 0.8 milliliters. So that's it for this class of problems. Uh, the thing I would suggest is just write down everything that you have, follow the steps step by step, just brute force it, and in the end uh, you'll come up with the answer, and, and sometimes you can even just look at the final answer that you have versus the information that you started out with, and uh, it gives you some kind of answer whether it makes sense or not. For example, here, um, 20 milligrams is a little less than half of the total amount that's in the bottle. So our final answer, you would hope, is a little less than half of what's in the entire bottle, you know, the final liters that you want to give. So 0.8 is a little less than half of 2 milliliters, so this answer makes sense. So that's it. On the next video, I'm going to go through uh, some weight-based calculations, and then on the third video, I'll do some drip rate calculations. See you there.